All right, this is fourth grade, module one, lesson 15. This is gonna be a really short introduction because basically all we're doing in this lesson is we're continuing to practice the standard algorithm, although now the students are gonna find that they have to do a lot of regrouping uh, during these problems. So here for the standard algorithm, the thing that Eureka Math uh, wants is, I guess, advocating, is for students to do all of the regrouping necessary first to really kind of just set up the problem and then subtract all in one fell swoop, okay? And that's a little different than the way I was taught when I was a kid and the way I've always taught as a teacher, but let's go with the flow with Eureka Math because there really is nothing wrong with the way they're saying, so let's go with it. It's fine. Okay, so if I'm going to look and, and get this set up correctly and do all the regrouping that's necessary, six ones is not enough to take away nine ones, so I'm going to regroup. So I'm going to take one of these tens, leaving us with four left over, and then I'm going to regroup them for ten ones, so that gives me sixteen ones. Now when I'm looking here, uh-oh, now I have four take away eight. Well, that's not enough. So I need to go into the hundreds column, and I'm going to take a, one of these hundreds, leaving us with five, and cash it in for ten tens. So instead of having four tens, I will now have fourteen tens. And then when I look here, I've got five hundreds take away nine hundreds. Well, that's not enough. That's not good. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into the thousands place. I'm going to take one of these thousands, leaving us with eight and I'm going to cash it in for ten hundreds. So instead of having five hundreds, I will now have fifteen hundreds. And then I'm going to look at the thousands place. Goodness, more regrouping, because I have eight thousands take away nine thousands. Well, that's no good. So I'm going to take one of these ten thousands, leaving us with four, and cash it in for ten thousands. So instead of having eight thousands, I will now have eighteen thousands. Now I have four ten thousands, take away ten, uh, seven ten thousands. Well, that's no good. So I have to do some more regrouping. So instead of having seven in the hundred thousands, I'll only have six hundred thousands. I'm going to cash in that hundred thousands for ten ten thousands. So instead of having four, ten thousands, I will now have fourteen ten thousands, and thankfully this is fine. Six take away five is good. So I have sixteen take away nine, that gives me seven in the ones place. I have fourteen tens take away eight tens, that gives me six tens. I have fifteen hundreds take away nine hundreds, that gives me six hundreds, there's my comma although I can fill in the comma at the end. I have 18 thousands, take away 9 thousands, that leaves me with 9 thousands. I have 14 ten thousands, take away 7 ten thousands, so that leaves me with 7 ten thousands. And lastly, I have 6 hundred thousands, take away 5 hundred thousands, and that leaves me with 1. And so there is our standard algorithm Although what's not so standard for me is the concept of setting everything up in the first place and then just subtracting. And I think that's kind of cool. So here's just a little bit of practice drawing uh, tape diagrams. And I'm not really going to show the mathematics afterwards because I think the key part for these problems is just learning how to draw and then use a tape diagram. So it says a national monument had 160 uh, 1,747 visitors during the first week of September. So as I go through this, I like to, you know, underline or box the, um, the important or what seems to be the important information. And sometimes I end up boxing stuff that isn't important. Sometimes I forget to box stuff that ends up being important. And then uh, it says a total of 759,656 people visited the monument in September. How many people visited the monument after the first week of September? Okay, so basically we've got this 
this two parts, right? The first week of September, and I'm going to label that first. And then we have the after the first week. So I'm going to put the A. I'll put A-F-T-E-R, after, okay? So we've got like these two characters, these two components. The first component is the first week of September, and then we have a second piece of information, which is after the first week of September. And I'm going to start by drawing these two tapes exactly the same length. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the question again and modify the tapes as necessary. So I'm going to go back and read the question again, and it says a national monument had 167, 160,747 visitors during the first week of September. So that tells me we can fill in this length. That length right there is 160,747 visitors. And now I'm going to continue reading, and it says a total of 759,656 people visited the monument all September, the whole time. So the idea would be, well, what's the total? The total goes right here, right there. And that's our 759,656 people. That's the total. And then as I go back, it says, how many people visited the monument after the first week? So that's this length right here. And I'm going to put the big old fat question mark right here. Now, teachers in particular, um, notice that as I started off with the tape diagrams being identical, and nothing in the question suggested that I needed to fix or lengthen or shorten one of the tapes, and that's okay. So as a result, I have a tape diagram that is absolutely not proportional. The two tapes look the exact same length, but we know that they're not, um, especially since the total is 759,000, right? So that's okay. Some questions, however, do require us to modify the tape. But in this, this instance, we did not need to modify it. So as a result, the end of the, I mean, the, the, the picture kind of might look misleading, but don't let that st stump our students. In this case, it's okay that the tapes are the same length. But the point is, the tape diagram tells us, basically, that we need to subtract. And I'm not going to subtract it for you. I'm just going to let you uh, do that part. Once again, I'm just going to show you the, the tape diagram. I'm not going to show you the standard algorithm of subtracting. I think you guys can get that part. Uh, so the shadow software company earned a total of $800,000 selling programs during the year 2012. Um, $125,300 of it was used to pay expenses of the company, like rent and air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. How much profit did the shadow software company make in the year? All right, so I'm going to do, oh, let's do a side-by-side a -side tape on this one. So the total is 800,000. And then I'm going to go back and read. And it says $125,300 of that amount was used to pay the expenses. So they're saying of this tape, some of it, and I'll just arbitrarily say this much right here. This much was $125,300. And then, so that's the expenses. So I'm going to squeeze in EXP for expenses. And then it says, how much profit did the software company make? So that means this rest over here must be profit. And the question is, we don't know how much that is, and that's what we're asked to do. And this ends up being a beautiful tape diagram that looks like a part, part, whole, which means we're going to subtract. 800,000, subtract 125,000. Boy, there's going to be lots and lots of regrouping, but I'm not going to show you that part. 
I'm just going to leave you with this is one example of what that tape diagram might look like. And that wraps up fourth grade, module one, lesson 15, continuing to use the standard algorithm, in this case, mostly with word problems.